Welcome to Jump School. I'm your host, Asan Ali, aka The Style Jumper. On this podcast, you'll learn a ton of things. We'll talk about style, confidence, etiquette, creativity, and entrepreneurship. Today's episode was brought to you by my new book, Why Style Matters, The Mindset of Dressing Well and How It Impacts Your Life. To get your autographed copy, click the link in the description. Today's guest is a bespoke designer, content creator, entrepreneur, custom hat maker, founder of BM Franklin and Company, the nostalgic renaissance man himself, Brandon Franklin. Episode 15. The following is an excerpt from Instagram Live. Let's go. So I might, I might need you to, there you go. <laughs> okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right, now I got to redo my whole thing now. No. Bro, look, bro, I'm like, man, am I drinking? <laughs> I know. <laughs> What's well, good, bro? How you doing? I'm good, man. Can't complain. I'm alive. Yeah. Last, yeah. You know, I got a... Got, got a little bit of work. Yeah. How's New York? What's it like up there? Um, we, you know what? We are ready. We have been ready to get outside. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we, we've been safe and following, you know, the rules. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, obvious issues and obvious things, we've been outside. We've been yeah. very safe. I said we've been outside. So, um, so yeah, man, you know, it's, it's a collective atmosphere right now of like, you know, let, let's get back to work. Um, you know, we cried, we dried, we, we yeah. got angry, you know, we, you know, we did all those things and then it was like, okay, wipe those emotions, let those things pass through and then, yeah. um, and then let's get to work, you know? Yeah, man. So that's where, that's where, you know, this week has been about that for me. Um, it's been about, you know, getting back in here and getting re-inspired, you know, mm -hmm. um, from a creative standpoint, but also just from like, you know, a business standpoint, a community standpoint. Uh, no uh, doubt. Gifts them, you know what I mean. So it's yeah. been, been good, man. It's been, it's been good. How about this? I've been good, man. You know, to your point, there's a lot of things that's um, that's changing, um, a lot in the atmosphere, a lot of things that we have to restructure our minds and really reconsider going forward. You know, life is no longer, you know, how things were before COVID, but also before God bless the dead, the brothers and sisters who lost their lives. Um, you know, Brianna, Floyd, I mean, and all those brothers and sisters who, you know, the, what, the last 400 mm -hmm. or so have, have not been, um, there hasn't been any type of, you know, police response or responsibility to those deaths. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things that's festering in, 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 the, in us and in the culture and in the community and the world abroad. So I'm happy, you know, COVID was, although it's challenging on a lot of areas of life, Mm -hmm. It was the perfect timing for this. Yeah. Right? Because everybody was home. You know, everybody was kind of tapped in and everyone was online. Exactly. So it was perfect. The amount of just flooding in. Yeah. yeah. Perfect storm. You know, got, you know, obviously we never wanted anyone to lose their lives. But, um, you know, this was, you know, this is our MLK moment, I think. You know, you know our, our, our Malcolm moment. So 100%. Um, 100%. Look at how many, you know, outside of that, after that happened, how many people, you know, of, in our community, our, our grandparents, our aunts, our, our fathers, our mothers, you know, how many people of them just said, you know what, I do, did the same exact thing. They heard, they felt, they knelt, yeah. led, and then they got to work, you know, and then getting to work is, it's, it's, it's our duty to, to do our part, and number one, protecting it, and yeah. what has forgotten or what, that ha what has been destroyed, it's our duty to rebuild. You know, exactly. this time, keep it, keep it, you know, so different, yeah. different strategies and different tactics in regards to how to deal with this, you know, like we can't just keep going down, you know, doing the same things, expecting a different result when clearly, you know, the results have been pretty damn near the same, you know, so. Exactly. So, exactly. so that's, that's dope, man. I appreciate, you know, your perspective. And for those of you who don't know, you know, you know, Brandon is an amazing hat maker. Um, and I'm excited to kind of get you guys into understanding his world and what the science of making the spoke hats uh, is like. And, you know, I'll give you a quick story about how I met him. I, he posted, I was, I don't know, I was looking for hats, you know, on, you know, <laughs> and searching on Instagram yeah. and uh, saw one of his posts 
and it, I think it was actually a, a young lady was on the post and her she was wearing this dope hat and I was like, boy, I would murder one of those hats. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah. know, and as yeah. and the whole Brandon responded, you know, he was like, yeah, I think you would, you know, and although we weren't able to make the, 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 the connection that we wanted to at the time, you know, I've been watching and appreciating his craft and it's been growing in his business. And I'm so honored to have the opportunity to speak with him. So without further ado, Mr. Brandon Franklin, please give us the, the honor of getting to know who you you from and um, get some insight to it. Ah, so can you can you hear me connection good? We kind of just skipped a little bit. I, I can hear you good. Okay. Um, well, uh, started off this uh, this journey of mine um, as a uh, as a baby in <laughs> between Brooklyn and um, and Baltimore, actually right outside of Baltimore. Uh, lived in Florida for a little bit. Ended up coming back up to New York. Um, after school, and um, you know, I, I, I was look, looking in, in search for something that I could, you know, that could creatively, um, you know, arouse me and also also put a uh, put a roof over over my head. So I started working for Ralph Lauren, and uh, that's kind of where I fell in love with uh, with fashion. It was more so because of the storytelling that uh, that 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 mm -hmm. that specific brand incorporates into a lot of their clothing. Um, you know, they've been around for a while. So you think about when they started in the 60s or 60, whatever, you know, there's plenty of stories that they've had to tell from different collections. So that was, I, I was very into that, the details. Um, I had the opportunity to kind of jump throughout the company and experience different roles, um, which exposed me to, you know, more of the business side of things. Um, and then I left. I left uh, in, search for, in search of something more, something a bit more hands-on, something you know, a place that was actually creating their products and then selling and not a place who was buying and purchasing from someone else. So I ran into um, the owner of one of the oldest hat shops in New York, and it's uh, called Worth and Worth. And um, I got there at a perfect time. You know, they were making the transition from being this mom and pop that was very exclusive. So I mean, the client list was, you know, Paul Simon, James Spader, John Legend, just to name a few, like Worth and Worth was the spot to go to if you wanted a real hat. And also, if you wanted some kind of creative injection, okay. because the owner at the time is, you know, one of the one of the dopest creatives that I've ever met. Um, you know, he's, he was also my mentor, obviously, in the craft, and and that's pretty much where I started to fall in love with uh, with hats, and and just the craft of hat making. So amazing, man! You know, yeah, man. So, sorry. So I worked there for about five and a half, uh, six years. So it was kind of like my master's program experience. <laughs> And um, and from there, you yeah. know, I started off just kind of like, you know, figuring out what what what, there, what what needs to be done essentially. You know what I mean? And just a, as a side note, I've been looking yeah. for yeah. Stuff, if there's anybody out there who is hungry, I <laughs> mean, no. But um, but I uh, but I like I said, I worked there, I pushed my way into um, you know, hey, listen, and to getting it to where it was so busy that you know we needed all hands on deck in regards to the production. And that's essentially where I started, yeah. you know, physically uh, learn the craft. And, um, you know, I did six days a week there, like I said, for about six years. And it was an insane, insanely amazing wow. experience from, you know, the point of, you know, having the opportunity to be the second hand in terms of like, you know, running someone else's business to, you know, making and like I said, honing my skills and techniques uh, with the craft. And that's pretty much what all these are. You know, these are all of my tools, my blocks, they're functional antiques. They're anywhere from 70 to 120 years old. And, you know, the importance of these all the way down to the importance of, of taking these and taking your time is everything that essentially, you know, I learned and I value. Hey, Brandon, you know, one of the things that there's a couple of good points I want to uh, follow up on. Um, some of the feedback we're getting is that the signal is really bad. We can hear you, but the signal is really pixelated. So we don't know if it's either a cellular or Wi-Fi, which may be able to help you get a better uh, signal. But um, you're pretty glitchy, but the audio is cool. And I was like, well, if we got to deal with glitchy video, then that's what it's going to be. But uh, I'm down with the audio. Okay. Worst case scenario. Okay. Yeah. How are we looking now? Um, it looks like it wants to refresh. 
Uh, we're still glitchy. Okay, hold on. But that's but look, yeah. Good. A little bit better. I mean, it's not as stiff as it was. I mean, it's pixelated, but I think it was, it's much better than it was previously. So we can just keep going. Um, and I just think it just needed to refresh and catch up so now we can see you pretty clearly. Um, so that's dope. Um, so, man, so what was, who and what were some of your biggest influence? Who influenced you as you were growing up? So you started, uh, you were saying you were born in Baltimore, is that correct? Yeah, born outside of Baltimore. Well, bo born and raised in Brooklyn. Um, spent time down in Columbia, Maryland, which is outside of Baltimore. And um, bro, yeah, bro, I am I am in Montgomery County. Oh, so, really? Oh, yeah, so that's where I live. <laughs> <laughs> DMV, baby. <laughs> oh yeah, I know all about it. I know all about it. That's funny. So Columbia, yeah, yeah, I, I frequent Columbia a lot. So I got some some peeps right. out there. Yeah, my grandmother lives there. My my mother lives there. Oh, bro. Yeah. We got bread. We, we got, we, this is a whole nother conversation. It's getting oh, deeper yeah. right here. Dude, I was down there. Um, I was down there last, uh, I, I believe, last fall for a, a really good a brother of mine, man. A brother of mine. Someone you have to check out. His name is um, his name is Aaron Jones, but Bushless of Baltimore. One of the okay. tailors you'll meet. The tailor shop is incredible. They're on Charles what? Street. Dude. Okay. So, yeah. Taking notes. Taking notes. We'll, 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 we'll talk on that. So, one of the things, so we're going to jump into, um, I want to know who was one of your, who's your biggest influence growing up? Who, who was that person? Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big question. Well, one of them, one of them. Biggest influences growing up was definitely my grandmother. You know, like she pretty much raised me. She was the one who instilled fear in me. <laughs> yeah. Fear God. He was the one, you know what I mean? That's what's up. Um, but, and, and, you know, talking about, you know, growing up. I mean, there's stages of growing up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Transition from, you know, from grandmother and then ended up progressing on to mom throughout mm -hmm. the teenage years, mainly because I could get over on mom a little easier. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, both, both, the, the both of them were creative. The both of them, you know, grandmother sell flowers down at Morgan State. Mm -hmm. and, from six in the morning till six at night, and it'll be like, here's five bucks. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, live, handle that five dollars. We, we, you know, we thought that was a million bucks anyway, and that's it, all they were gonna give you anyway. So it, it big go. <laughs> <laughs> Get her over here, peel off. Oh man, I got these five. I'm good. I got these ones. Where we gonna go? You know, exactly. But yeah. But, Hard work. She. That's what she. That's what she instilled in me. You know. She also. You know. Uh, uh, communicated the importance of using these. You know. Yeah. Your hands. Yeah. Exactly. You always can fall back if you have a skill to translate into these. You know. And that. I mean, I had no idea I'd be making hats when I was that age. But yeah. it's transition. And I really didn't think that a lot of what she told me had really stuck. But mm -hmm. as it out, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It, 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 it uh, subconscious, the subconscious turned into the conscious. You yeah, know? That, that muscle memory, man. You hear grandma talk all the time. Mm -hmm. Her voice, it's in our, it's my, grandma's in your bones. So, exactly. you know, she, she's just, it's like, you know, they say that uh, footprint in water, mm -hmm. you know, it's yep. the same thing that's in our bodies. And when we're dealing with grandma, she, she's just preaching and telling us to do the right things and just how hard it, you know, how hard life is and was and how important it is to use these hands and, it's, and to do something with it that, and that was the part of the culture of that era too. You know, mm -hmm. it was all about making stuff. My grandma used to make, you know, like uh, she used to do rugs and and making blankets and things of that nature. So, yeah, um, you know. So did she teach you to sew? Uh, Roberto's asking, did she teach you yeah. a little bit about sewing? Uh, no. You know, she taught me how to sew on my button or how to yeah. sew something that I messed up, but. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it wasn't it, it wasn't until a, a later, a later, much later date. Actually, my time at um, at Worth and Worth, where I actually got uh, to use a machine, you know, consecutively, uh, con well, consistently rather, for the first time. And you know, from there, it was just kind of like my coworkers, seamstresses, who would pass in and pass out. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, giving work to them. I'm also studying. I'm also watching yeah. them. Some of them ended up taking me under their wing and. You know, some, again, others, I just, I just watched and I got on the machine as well and I messed up a bunch of times. Yeah. Fix it. You have to troubleshoot. You have to know, 
all the little ins and outs. And now, you know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing because just like hats and just like with everything else, you know, anyone can be, you know, can I say use a machine, but the technique in which you use the machine with is yeah. separate you from one to the next. Yeah. It, you know, what's interesting it, when I was doing my research and looking at, you know, the things that you have online, but also seeing uh, other hat makers, it, it's like being, you, know, you guys are like a mechanic, you know what I mean? And, and I, I was seeing, I was watching you and you were so, you know, purposeful in how you were rubbing, you know, cleaning off the hat and just the way you look back at it. And I'm like, man, you know, I, you don't think about those things when you walk into a traditional store mm -hmm. and you just grab a hat, you know, and, you know, one that's, you know, um, you know, right off the rack compared to a bespoke piece. Mm -hmm. you know? And one of the things that I was thinking about in, you know, when the 60s was the beginning of the downfall, if you will, with hats, you know, people mm -hmm. start growing their froze and start growing their hair long, right? So obviously, hat. there's a couple of shows, you know, a couple of films out there, those black exploitation, you know, films where, you know, the Max, they wore the big brims, yeah. you know, but everybody else kind of, you know, you know, moved away from that. So kind of go back a little bit and talk about what became the interest, entry point and interest for you to get into the craft because it's a very, very unique craft. And I also wanted to know, what did you learn from Ralph Lauren and took that into craft making? Um, so I, one of the things that just drew, draws me to something so, I guess, peculiar is just, is, is the peculiarity of it, is mm -hmm. the singularity of it, is, 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 you know, almost me feeling like I am a part of um, a resurgence in a sense, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's it's everything from you know again, and this goes back to my grandmother. You know, my grandmother was a, a, a historian. Um, you know, her grand her grandmother and also her mother were also historians. They were professors, and they were some of the first the first people to help start Morgan State University. Oh, so, really? So when it comes to you know when huh. it comes to American history, when it comes to hat history, when it comes to that like that stuff, I dive into like I mm. I, I love it. You know, it feeds my soul. Um, I always say that I feel like, you know, an old hat maker from the mid 1800s jumped into my body, saw an opportunity. Mm. Like, all right, look, we got a second chance at this. So, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You don't have the big a feather plume. You know, when you say that, I'm thinking about uh, seeing the movies of uh, the Three Musketeers, you know, those yeah, hats, you know. Yeah. So, you know, history is amazing in how you can re. Um, rewrite history when it comes to style and design and just like iterate and iterate exactly. and you know, bring exactly. that, that craft and that value because when you think about that era, you know, that was it. There was no malls, you know what I mean? It wasn't online. People were actually sitting there and you, you think about not only the hats, but the dresses and, and the men's shirts and the, the garments were just unbelievable. You think about the quality and also what people had in their bank accounts. They didn't have that. Mm -hmm. They had to invest in quality. And yeah. that's actually what has bitten us in the butt outside of our personal use of quality. It's just polluted the hell out of the world. Yeah. You know, buying a piece like this, buying a piece like this is something that may cost you a little bit. But when you think about the amount of times that you wear it, if you want to boil it down to the penny, you also think about this is something that you need to maintain and keep up so that it can not only just serve you, but serve your grandson, serve your son, serve your godchild. Mm -hmm. And that's what, again, hats, that was the, the, the quality of the way hats used to be made. And that's one of the things that I fell in love with, again, is just the slow burn of it. So that, mm -hmm. you know, you can see something that you made come back to you five years later, you know, a little tattered, worn, but, you know, you do a couple of magical things with this and these. Yeah. <laughs> this, and it's brand new. And you're like, wow, man, I remember this time when I was making these pieces or what I was inspired by or you know, who this person was, a conversation, so much that comes back to you from it. And that's the yeah. end of taking a, a, a craft that was pretty much buried so that we could produce stuff offshore and for not even a fraction of the cost, pennies. Yes. But what we don't know is that because it's so cheap, you think about it, there's, there's no thought that goes into it. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, thank you. And you wear it for that one day and then you just whoop. Yeah. And it sits in your closet, you know? So that's not only important to me, but I feel like it's important to, you know, the people who I make pieces for, the people who want to um, get something made. It's that conversation of like, yo, this is gonna be, 
you know, your friend for, for life. A life. Life. Well, two, two things I was thinking about. One was I didn't realize <clears throat> until recently even people getting their shoes resold. Yeah. And I didn't realize that you could just you telling me this. So you can reform a hat and, and kind of like give it new life. I had no idea that you could oh, yeah. do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's uh, another thing that just really gets me gassed as well is, is you know, when I have vintage hats that come through, we have, we have a full repair renovation service. Um, Great. You know, we'll, we'll, uh, you know, we'll have that <clears throat> online if you wanted to get information, just hit us up. But, you know, I love having old Borsellinos come through the shop or old Stetsons that were for or old Dobbs or old J. Lord Hatters, you know, Hatters that have disappeared, but they were in yeah. like 40 years and the, the, the felt is so sexy and supple and the coat. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. You're geeking out. You're geeking out, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love it though, because rarely do you, this is something new that everyone's on this call right now. They have no, I probably have never heard this kind of dialogue. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's a, it's an art and it's a craft that it's like, I, I remember, and I always kind of go back to analogies and things of my childhood. I used to love watching two things. One, with hats, I was always watching the Westerns. You know, growing up in the 80s, it was always back. That was what was on TV. So mm -hmm. you had the big cowboy hats. But also then, if you go into the period pieces, to your point of, you know, um, you know the history, I, I just remember those those guys that were building the, the um, what do you call it, the the, the the actual clothes that the knights wore, you know what I mean? The yeah. armor, and yeah. just that craftsmanship. And you would see that, you know, that that blacksmith, and he was just blah, all day long, <laughs> building a sword, creating, you know, the, the uniform, you know, to, to cover and protect these soldiers and the craft. And I think about the craftsmanship back then, it had to be so amazing oh, to yeah. be able to do that. And for you to be able to take that time and spend actually really, designing and creating in something that you you quote you're quoted as saying you know wearable art so let's talk a little bit about that and how do you define wearable art uh wearable art man wearable wear wearable wearable <laughs> it's your it's your statement not mine <laughs> uh, oh man i forgot that it should have been a w instead of the r we wearable wearable art um yeah. it, is <laughs> For me, again, it's it's all it's all about it's all about the person who's rocking it, you know. So mm -hmm. wearable is, you know, an expression of you, your individuality, your personality, um, your vision, the mood that you want to try to create through this hat. Um, that's 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 the wearable art form. Because the wearable art form for me could be ergonomic. It could be yo, this is my wearable art because I don't want to carry an umbrella, so I rock a big brim when it gets when it's rainy outside. You know, or it's, I want to be seen, you know what I mean? And that's one of the things, wearable art is, is, is it's expression, it's individuality, but also for me, it's the ability to wear it every day. It's purposeful, it serves a physical purpose. It's keeping yeah. you, it's keeping you warm, it's keeping you dry, it's, you know, if I don't, it's keeping your head somewhat protected, it's putting your hair up, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. For some people, it's also just like a level of comfort. I mean, you see, I'm follically challenged, uh, but it's my brother, my man, <laughs> <laughs> wearing my hat. But it's like it's a million degrees and it's humid as hell here in New York today. But yeah. uh, you know, it's 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 like it's that comfort. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it's it's how comfortable do you feel underneath your hat, as opposed to how comfortable you feel if you don't have it. Yeah, especially for guys who, to to us, like us, who who are bald, not by choice, right? And we don't have a lot of uh, variety when it comes to style. So usually what happens when I talk to guys about style, you know, if you're balding, shave that crap off, man. Shave that shit off, you know, and then yeah. grow your, if you can grow your beard, grow your beard. You know what I mean? Just that little feather over here or, yeah. your, or your lineup starts at the back crown of your head. You're like, bruh. Come on, you know what I mean? Yo, exactly. kill it! You cannot get a cul-de-sac shaped up. There's no such thing as like a cul-de-sac shape up. <laughs> give it up, give up the ghost. I like to say, give up the ghost, man. But it, but it's dope, man. And I, I unfortunately, but I know it's gonna happen soon. I don't have the honor of sporting one of your your pieces. But I'm gonna ask you this. You know, I was thinking about it when I was putting this on. Is is, is there a true difference between a hat that has um, that's raw edged 
or when it's stitched like this and it has like a fold over in the stitching, is that is that a sign of of quality or is that just a style of of um, of production, if you will, or or design? Um, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of everything you just said. Okay. Uh, because that's a wool piece, uh, yeah. wool tends to have a bit more free motion. Wool is very disobedient when you're trying to tell it what to do. So right. it's that, what, what, the, what it's called is it's called an underwelt. So an underwelt or an overwelt is when you fold the felt over or you fold it under, you sew it. Um, it gives rigidity to the brim. It, 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 it kind of deters the brim away from waving if it was just one single piece of stuff. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm yeah, like this one. I got I got this one. Let me see. Mm -hmm. well, my wife has she has one that's raw edge, so it's a little more flowy, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now you can get away with the raw edge if you have fur felt and if you've used a bit of a of a chemical called uh sizing or stiffener. And mm -hmm. in that regard, you know, if it's a let, let's say if it's a, if it's a three season, which is a light we a, a light weight uh rabbit, um <clears throat> it'll hold its shape for you know, for, for a couple of weeks, depending on how much you're wearing it, depending on the humidity and depending on how you're storing it. Uh, okay. But after a season of wearing it, you will start to see the brim wave a little bit. But that's one of the things that comes with taking care of your investment. You bring it to get cleaned and blocked. And if you get something made here or anywhere else, typically, if that hatter knows how to repair and renovate, he will block your piece for free. It's just a kind mm. of refresh, you know? Yeah. A lot of times with straw like this, for instance. Yeah piece that's in the process of being made, but you see how this has this tonal, uh, tonal black binding? Yeah. To assist the straw and not unraveling. Exactly. Around. You know what I mean? So, and with straw, you can also do overwelts and underwelts if you didn't want that contrasting type of texture. Um, yeah. The, this is a myelin straw, which is spun. Mm. And this, the edge of this looks raw. Okay. It's like this one. Because, exactly. But this has been folded under. So we took the, uh, after we finished sewing it, we sewed the under bit. And what we did to keep this brim flat is we put a wire at the edge. Oh, OK. So myelin has a bit of stiffness to it. It's not as malleable as a lot of uh, toil. Toil would be like paper straw. And that's the stuff that gets super floppy that you can roll up, pack up. Oh, well, maybe that's what I got. That's toil. Yeah. OK. Yep. Got it. Yeah. So it's like using Japanese, uh, Japanese glazed paper weave. This is a good joint. It's great for traveling. It's great if you just need something to pop on and keep it Got moving. it. That's awesome, man. You know, um, well, I was going to ask you this, and this is, this is part of mindset. Two things. How were you able, as far as a sustainability standpoint, you were uh, to, to be in this industry for this long, what are some things that, you know, you, it's just like anyone going to L.A., right? You have a 10-year, 15-year overnight success, right? you're grinding and you're an actor and you just, you know, you own these, these, uh, these small gigs and then all of a sudden you pop, you know, what are some things you've been able to do to, to keep your mind and, and, and your business going? Because it has to be challenging, I would think, to, um, to go through those ebbs and flows as you're learning. And, you know, it's, this is not like, um, you know, it's, again, you're saying that this is a, a type of business that's kind of resurging and it's not something that you know like a sneaker shop right everybody going and buy sneakers but to 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 really hone and develop your craft and go through those ebbs and flows what are some of the things that you you've been able to you know really do and think forwardly i guess to uh to have that success you know as you have um so it's 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 simple i've just i've just kept to my playbook you know mm -hmm. going into it i knew it was going to be a slow burn um oh. Slow burns create longevity, you know? So as this thing starts to grow, you know, when it, I'll be 70, 80, but there'll be somebody, hopefully a little something running around that yeah. position to take it from me and not necessarily have to grind like I did. Um, that's, the, that's the end game. When you keep that in mind, then, you know, jumping out of the window and paying a PR company to like really push you forward is only gonna make you a trend. It's not gonna mm. make you a stand, mm. you know? I want this to be a state, you know, being frank, and that's the standard of hats. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. Mean, it's been 11 years, you know, it's been five years since I've been independent on my own and, and started being Franklin and company. But again, you know, I don't want people to look at, look, look at my piece, let's say, and be like, oh, I can identify that hat because it has a bullet on it. That's being Franklin. No, I want them to be like, yo, 
that's a dopely, beautifully created, beautifully hand blocked hat. That must be BM Franklin, you know? The same. Yeah. Look at Borsellino pieces. I can, t I mean, especially with, with the old school pieces, I can look at a hat, look at the way that it's crafted, look at the way that it's fallen, the way that it's moving, and be like, that's a Stetson, or that's a Borsellino, or yeah. that's old knots, or that's a vintage hat altogether. Like, I have that eye now. I have that eye because of, again, you know, being 12 years with that happening. But going back to, you know, the longevity and going back to like it popping, like, I value experience you know mm -hmm. that's also something that i want to provide you know i want to go into the grocery market sometimes to get an experience but it doesn't happen because sure. I, I ain't about giving experiences in no damn supermarket you know yeah, so, right but you know when it comes to again something like this like I, I want you know this piece to be appreciated yet but i want them and i want my clients with my customers want people who are interested in whatever people who get stuff made to be more so like damn man like this is so beautiful the details are gorgeous, but when you're like, yo, if you look at just kind of how this is thought, that's essentially what I want all eyes on. And again, like, I don't really care for the, you know, is he going to be super famous? You got a crazy successful business? No, because like I said, again, sticking to my playbook, um, it's proved to work. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, like I said, it's it's been... It's been a slow burn. <laughs> like, but, but, you know, that's the beauty of your mindset, though. You know, and that's why I wanted to kind of wrap that that yeah. section about it uh, mindset because the way you think about yeah. what you're doing in your craft. And I'll so, just add one more thing, one more yeah. thing, to that. one more thing to that is be, is is it's not being it's not be about being complacent, you know, because some people are like, well, I got a, I got this successful business, I got this, I got, and they're not they they're they're afraid to grow, they're afraid to you know, take that risk and put the money in or, or take the risk and move out to a bigger space. They're afraid for that. And a lot of times it's because they haven't given the time to outgrow the situation they're in properly. Mm. So it's not about, you know, I'm comfortable here, musical chairs, I'm not going anywhere. No, not at all. You know, we do have goals, of course. Yeah. Uh, but it's about knowing who you are, knowing your brand. And again, if you want people to appreciate how long you've been in the game, then they'll be like, damn, man, you started then, but they only just heard of you 10 years later. That's what longevity is. And no it'll doubt. stick the minds of people, again, as a standard. No doubt. And it's like, you know, when you were talking about earlier, you want, at least in my mind, when someone goes to New York, they need to purchase. If they're going, their hat wear, or they even curious about wearing a hat, they need to have a BM Franklin hat piece because they know they've heard about it, but also the part that you're talking about, that experience that they're going to receive from you by, you know, deciding to get up the spoke hat. So what we're going to do, we'll roll into, you know, the business side of things. Like what are some of the, me, if I'm walking into your space and I've never experienced, you know, the, the idea of a bespoke hat, what is that, what's that process like? You know, I understand that, you know, building relationships is really important to you with your clients. So, mm -hmm. What should that experience be or what should I expect when I walk through your doors? Um, well, if you're lucky, expect a cold beer, first off. There you uh, go. Or a warm glass of whiskey, whatever you, you know, but uh, <laughs> Maybe however you roll, right? All part of the experience, you know? No, yeah. I, you know, my, but our, our process is simple. You know, it's, it's, it's very technical, but it's also very free in a sense of I really like to get to know the person, you know, I don't want the... I don't want the, you know, oh, what'd you do yesterday? Oh, what, you know, I, I, I want us to actually start a conversation. And if it takes long, yeah. 15 minutes, if it takes an hour, whatever, so be it. But, you know, we start off, of, again, it's a conversation. Um, you know, we'll move on to measuring your head. Uh, then we'll move on to my recommendations in regards to, let's say, crown height and brim width. You know, mm -hmm. what would work perfectly for you. If you already haven't told me through our conversation what you're specifically looking for. Um, because that's also important. You know, we could be experts at our crafts, whether you're an expert plumber, whether you're an expert hairdresser, you're an expert whatever. Listening is what's yeah. going to make you successful at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That's you know? sales. That's sales all day. Yeah, and I mean, like, there's a lot of, like, uh, again, like, I'm, I'm, I'm even guilty of it as well, but a lot of artists, you know, we'll get into our bag and we'll get into our zone and just be like, do, 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 and going so crazy to where our creativity will kind of block what this person's trying to tell us, you know? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we'll turn around and go and be like, man, I'm gonna put a purple hat on you. Oh, yeah, you look great. Yeah. 
And then they're like, I feel horrible. <laughs> and some exactly. don't even tell you because they feel bad about letting you know and letting down the artist. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I agree with you. I think that's really important because it's sort of like, I, I guess I kind of liken it to like getting a suit or someone who walks into a place and they're buying a suit. And the salesman, they want the sale. They're not thinking truly about what this piece will do for that person. You yeah. know, not having a conversation about where, you know, what's your occupation? What's this suit for? The same thing with your hat. Where, where are you going to be? What season? Do you live in New York? Or you, do, or you, do you live in Cali? You know what I mean? Do you live in a hot climate, cold climate? Yeah. All those things, those yeah. questions need to be asked yeah. so that you provide the absolute best piece for that person that had so that they are in love with it and to your point it's not like fast fashion they wear it a couple of times and it's so, you know that, what I mean? if we start to bring that experience into let's say you know your h&ms you know then they're gonna have to start charging a little bit more for the pieces so you might have to think about what you're actually getting it's also going to motivate the staff in a sense to give a crap you know, but those experiences, it shouldn't just be, I mean, I learned a lot of that. And this was just, again, a blessing. And I was blindly walking through life. But Ralph Lauren, luxury brand, you know, you're not going to make the sit like there, there was this guy at the store that I worked at named Ralph, ironically, <laughs> but okay. dude would do, he, he was making six figures working less days on the sales floor than me. Wow. <laughs> would go out his, his, you know, his Long Island uh, housewives would come through and he'd give them some champagne and next thing you know they're dropping 35 G's and it's again, that, yeah man and again it's just that experience and then I thought to myself like I feel like everybody should have this if you're trying to come out of your if you're trying to get this money out of my pocket then you need to tell me why mm -hmm. you know you need to work Fred instead of just like sure. oh, I'm gonna hold you by the hand and ring you up that's you know? dope man that is dope and it's so funny how you, you just don't know uh, how your life experience is going to position you in the next phase of your life. You know, mm -hmm. all those examples, all those conversations, all those, you know, um, dialogues that you're having, you're like, man, you know, I want something like this at some point for myself. I want, I want you know, whenever I do whatever I'm going to do, yeah, that I'm going to give this same type of service and experience. Exactly. Exactly. When it, when it comes to materials, what are some common materials now? Now we're in, you know, you know, summer officially. Um, what are some seasonal items as far as like material wise? What what should I be thinking about wearing right now? Because it's hot right now. I'm in the house. It's hot. So I know. What, what I have on. Man, I need to switch it up. On too, bro. Like, listen, I, I I did a couple of tests here, and I was rocking this thing, and I was like, I'm starting to get hot. <laughs> Um, but you know what? These lamps, actually, this thing provides me with a little bit of shade, though. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. No you doubt. know? I mean, it's it's good. essentially because you're, you know, because we have melanin. Come on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sunblock that we, anybody could have at the end of the day, the natural kind, you know? But again, yeah. bald, it's made our head a lot more sensitive. So number one, mm -hmm. something on here that also can breathe. You know, felt's definitely not the move. Straw is. Uh, one weave that I use the most of the, uh, is called a, it's called a brisa weave, um, mm. Anima. But if you look at this guy here, you can kind of see, uh, not really. Um, but it's wait, an, wait, you can see through it. Yeah, it's an. Yeah, you can see it. But if yeah, if you can kind of see just yeah, yeah. So it's called brisa, and brisa is an end over end weave that promotes circulation throughout the crown, as opposed to let's say this myelin that I have on, which you really can't see anything through. Okay, this is something that's more of like, all right, I'm purposely wearing this piece because it's, you know, it might be a million degrees, but you're trying to protect yourself more so than anything from, um, from UV. So straw essentially is what uh, you want to wear. I personally try to use, I mean, I would say about 99% of the straw that I use is, is natural. There's okay. sometimes where we might use Toyo. And like I said, Toyo is, is, is glazed paper. Um, I try to stay away from that because also the longevity that you can get with Toyo is not as long as you can get with a natural straw. It's a palm, essentially. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Paper, if you get caught in the rain or, or, you know, if you're somewhere down in, you know, the Bahamas, whenever they let us out of this place, um, <laughs> you know, is paper will completely crumble. 
Mm. Really hard to re-stiffen and keep the integrity of the color and also the shape. So, um, so yeah, you know, these guys here, just some colors. We got the navy natural brisa, the black natural brisa. Beautiful. We got this gorgeous tobacco. It's one of my favorites. Mm. Um, and then from another standpoint is cut and sew. So you want to wear a cap in linen. You know, you want to wear a cap in linen. Like, cotton really? wall, you know, so that's the summertime. What movie. would you say is your, so what's your, what's your favorite style of hat? Would you say like, you know what, regardless, I'm good if I got one of these. I mean, obviously you're a hat maker, but when you when you when you grab this particular style of hat, you're like, I'm gonna murder it today. <laughs> <laughs> what to to uh, you, to wear? Yeah, yeah. What which, which which one that you um, it's you like wear and make. That's tough. So it probably. I mean, it's hmm. So when it comes to wearing, I go through I go through moods and motions, and it's gonna sound really like like trippy, but like the hat has to really speak to me. Mm -hmm. uh, really hard for me to sit down and make a hat for myself. Like, all right, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna make this for myself. Like, I, I just can't wrap my head around that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I get more inspired and pretty much only inspired when I'm making pieces for other people. Mm. So you know, sometimes, let's, let's say back in the day, you know, I'd make a piece for someone and I connected on designing it and talking about it and making it so much, you know, with the person I've been making for that I'm just like, shit, I'm about to rock this. Just make it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, you know, I would just turn yeah. try to make another one, but I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just slightly tweak it. And yeah. you know, it's, 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 again, it's, it's not finishing and putting as much, it's impossible for me to put as much love into a piece for myself mm -hmm. than it is for anyone else. You know, yeah. like, you'll always see are always unfinished because I'm like, I don't have time to sew a sweatband in for myself. Like, I, <laughs> there's no time for lining. What I need a lining for? You know, yeah. sometimes my bands on the outside, the pieces that I wear are, are pinned in. <laughs> oh, wow. It's, but, it's just yours because you know, you know. Exactly. You focus on the client. You're focused on, you know, and creating it, a beautiful exactly. product for someone else and not you. Exactly. And it, and it has to be my everyday piece. Like, once it's not... You know, I, the, the reason why I'm, I've gotten more comfortable being indoors without a piece on is from this, um, from COVID really, you mm. know, stuck in the darn house and we were making masks um, <clears throat> and it was great. But I was like sitting at a sewing machine making a mask with a hat on and I don't have no damn where to go. Yeah. So, <laughs> letting it air out. And I was yeah. I was like, yo, maybe something will grow. Maybe something. Yeah, you will know, grow. you know, maybe the dust will hit. You know, get some 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 what do you, Tinkerbell dust? What do you call it? Some pixie dust? <laughs> like get some hair growing up there. I feel you, man. So what about you know what about as far as clients? Is there a particular style of hat that you like making? Um, that you know that you feel as though you really have a a phenomenal understanding of this style and shape of hat. That you know, you know without a doubt. Obviously, I'm sure you can do all those different styles with your eyes closed. But is there a particular style of hat that, you know, you would usually say that this is this is what I really like doing on a consistent basis? Um, that, but I would say I would say material, material, <laughs> material that I love to 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 work with and to use and to just, you know, shape manipulate. Basically, it's a material that you know. Again, <clears throat> if you've been trained a certain way, and again, my boss being one of you know, the dopest hat makers in the game and yeah. studying and seeing this hand movement and motion and stuff like beaver. Um, and beaver. It, yeah, and it's, 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 what, it's what I call lightweight beaver. It's not a Western weight. It's what you would call a dress weight because mm. you, know, you think like beaver hats that were made in Western weights needed and were made particularly to just get beat up, you know? Mm. That's why they're ultra stiff. That's why they were thicker. Dress beavers were what you would see Stetson make in like the 70s and 80s when they started making fedoras to compete with other brands and to keep their brand up instead of just exclusively making cowboy hats. So, so yeah, so beaver, I'd say, is probably my favorite material. When it comes to making like a specific style, I would say uh, any, any formal piece, um, because formal pieces, typically, and you're talking formal styles like your Hamburg, your Bola, and your, um, and your top hat. You know, these mm. that are super calculated and, you know, you can really appreciate and typically pieces that are like black on black, you know, because again, you, 
uh, your Hamburg, your Godfather style, your Bowler, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's more focused on just the shape, you know? Like the details and all the stuff that can be ripped off and, take, and taken off and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. You know, like that's cool or whatever, but you know, the shape. You know the hands that work by it. See, seeing the lines and seeing the motions of how the pieces, you know, breathing and reflecting the, from the fingers that you've actually used to create some of those lines. You know, that's that's Beaver gives me the most satisfaction. But making formal pieces and just having them spick and span is definitely the uh, the vibe for me. <laughs> well, how do you, how do you, how do you stay not um, you know? motivated over the years like not get burnout you know is it is it the customers is it the you know new material is it just new ideas what keeps you going um i would say a lot of things you know i mean myself the hustle you know reminding myself every day you know like uh, I, I, honestly like how i guess i've worked my tail off and, you know, from friends to clients to whoever who have been with me since, you know, before I had my business, have seen how much I worked my tail off. Mm -hmm. um, it keeps me motivated in a sense. Um, that keeps me, honestly, from burning out, um, is just growing and, and continuing to build the thing that I'm nowhere near. And like I said, I keep reminding myself that, yeah, it's a slow burn. This is the journey we're on. Um, yeah. also, other thing, yes, clients, you know, clients and, and, and meeting people keep me motivated because it's 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 crazy man i mean again five years doing this you, you'd be surprised how many people you meet that aren't aware of what goes into it and you'd be surprised how many people you just meet in general who become brothers and sisters yeah you know, charm city what up baby bay, bay. Um, <laughs> charm city so yeah. that that remember my buddy i was telling you about the tale yeah. discover charm city that's miss alicia january his future wife and the both of them together run bushelers and it they're just yeah, oh, man, I can't wait to connect with them. That's what's up. Yeah, man. But um, but yeah, that's what keeps me, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. There are times where I have felt burnt out. Um, but a lot of that, and it's funny, like everything happens for, for a reason. You know, the beginning of like maybe a month of February, I was, uh, yeah, I was like, just not really feeling it, you know? Mm -hmm. I wasn't motivated. I wasn't really getting that inspired. And that was just a time where, you know, a lot of like traffic had started to calm down. And I feel like... Yeah. You know, we started also getting a lot of orders. Orders started flooding in, but, you know, a lot of these pieces were missing, um, you know, let's say, like, the, the time spent, you know, and it just got to the point where, selfishly, I wasn't, I didn't have time to just kind of mess around and rock stuff out, you know? I yeah. just had time to, you know, try stuff on samples or, you know what I'm saying? I just, I, I wasn't allowing myself the time to do so or, my, or myself the time to, um, give my focus and creativity and energy to other projects, you know, like the mm. projects on the back is absolutely insane. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's funny, like the COVID stuff and also switching and making masks and being motivated and using the machine now as my mage, as my main tool, you know, motivated me to get back in here and show some more love to my little babies back here. You know, it just, it, it, it started to pump me back up. And then, you know, again, like we were talking at the beginning of this, my motivation has now become my community, you know, yeah. like, like, all right, I feel like I, I got the energy of when I was a 20 something year old again, you know what I mean? Like, I'm ready to let's go. Man, I wish I had the energy of a 30 something year old, bro. So <laughs> I know you, <laughs> so I know you hype, you know. Right now, in about a week, I'm gonna be like, yo. <laughs> Son, bro, I'm burnt, I'm burnt. <laughs> well, look, man, you know, um, you know, one of the things I was thinking about as far as a hat, you know, I have several. What is the best way to, A, clean it, and two, store it? Um, the best way to clean it is send it to a professional, i.e. Mm. myself, i.e. Uh, your, your worth and worth, i.e. your Baron hats, i.e. your, <clears throat> you know, do your research on hat makers. Make sure, you know, you feel comfortable with them. And if they have a reputation service, send it on up. Or go visit one that's in your city. But, I mean, of course, I would say biasly, send me your pieces. You know, like I said, it's 11, almost 12 years in the game now. And I've seen quite a few pieces from vintage to personal to handmade by other people that needed to get, needed a little like tweak and adjustment. Um, you know, also, like I said, I mean, I, I, I have the tools uh, to fix them. That's usually, you can have the, where, you, you know, the knowledge, but you know, another thing just as a side note to kind of give back to the point of, you know, how did this all start? Like this stuff here, every single one of these pieces, zero, he was, I had to go get it all myself, you know, and it's really? that's one thing that I never 
ever stop trying to do is adding to my collection of vintage blocks and vintage tools. If I can't find a specific iron, then I'm going to, I'm going to wait for it. You know, or I'm gonna do a little bit more research. I'm going to go to antique fairs, estate sales, eBay, and look for everything that I need to complete or let's say replicate, um, you know, the place that I once was. Yeah. Wow, man. That, you know, these pieces, you know, you think about it, these are, you know, 100 year old, you know, 60, 80 year old blocks and pieces that shape the, the hats for thousands of people over the years. It's just, it's like you have artifacts in your, in your space, man, you know, and that, that just really, you know, think about those stories and those conversations and those wares of these, of these, of those pieces from back then. Yeah. Um, so if I, if I'm speaking to you and I walk up the street, you know, how, how would you articulate the true difference between an off the rack hat, something I just go and buy off the street, you know, um, to one that's bespoke or, or like if I go to like Macy's or somewhere like that, H&M, we talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. What's the, what's the difference? Um, in a bespoke hat or in a... From off the rack, like if I'm just buying something off the rack and it's just... If you're if you're fortunate enough to have one of those heads that just fits all, then God bless you. But the fact of the mm -hmm. matter is that not everybody does. Everybody's head is different. Even if you're the same size as the next person, the shape of your head is different. You know, and if there's a quality piece, it's not just going to be a wet paper towel to pop on that just will just adjust to anyone's. Then yeah. this, okay, needs to be shaped to your dome. Mm. You know? So that's the main that's the main thing. The second thing again is it's like. It's just not custom, you know? You're essentially settling for someone else's design, you know? And yeah, I want that. some people don't have the time or they don't have the brain capacity or they don't want to, you know, to sit and be like, all right, I'm not the designer, you're the designer, rock out, you know? Yeah. How do you usually get the word out? Like, how do people, you know, find out about your business? Is it just um, word of mouth mostly? It's word of mouth. And that's, again, like I said, that 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 is uh, what, 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 one thing that I love about how we've been growing this thing. And that's another thing that's, basically been the slow burn of it you know there's been more so grassroots let's say your instagram where we've had conversations with people um you know i've met people nine years ago you know that will rediscover or that'll randomly hit me up uh, a lot of people you know thank good thank god for all of y'all you know spread our words spread my name spread the spread the brand and spread you know the quality spread the craftsmanship so instagram facebook um, you know, we do a lot of pop-up shops as well. That's another one of our huge things. And Airbnb experiences before the whole COVID thing, you know, we would host a two-hour uh, workshop um, <clears throat> about the art of hat making. And the second hour, we'd actually get everyone's hands involved in the making of a piece as a group. Um, no. that, that went, you know, and then it all yeah. went. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? That they just know that it works and that it's going to come again, right? Yeah. You know, and so that that's an awesome idea. And I think I, I was listening, watching my my buddy uh, Roberto, uh, who asked that question. Um, that's a great idea, Roberto. Yeah. Um, so I want to hop over to because I think we're going to be running out of time soon, um, and this is just going to be rapid fire. Um, these are in, in some of these. I don't know if you know a lot of these people, but I, I, I'm hoping that you do at least a couple. Um, so. We're gonna do just basically who you would rock with. This is the last supper, the creative supper. Who are you would rock with at the table? Oswald Botain or Tom Ford? Probably Oswald Botain. All right, Martin. <laughs> Martin from Martin's show, or, or Will from Will the Fresh Prince? Who would it be? Uh, oh man. Martin, just because he was gritty. Martin, 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 Martin. He basically lived in a project building, so I got to go my man Martin, man. Love Martin. Um, D'Angelo or John Legend? Ooh, D'Angelo. Sorry, not even a contest. Bro, you already know. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Garen? Um, Yves Saint Laurent or Alexander McQueen? McQueen. Mm. Biggie or Nas? Brooklyn, baby. Brooklyn's in the house. And Chris Brown, Chris Brown and Usher. Uh, that's actually kind of low key tough. <laughs> Usher's done some weird shit, though. Yeah. I, oh, I might have to grow a Chris Brown on this one. 
That's what's up. Um, Lil' Kim or Foxy? I got to go with Ingrid, man. I got to go with Fox. There you go. Oh, I yeah. got Bro, I gotta go with Cosville, man. That's what's up, man. Jagged Edge or Jodeci? Jodeci. I'm telling you, Mary J. Blige or Sade? Ooh, you throwing some real, like, can you at me? Yeah, man. Mary or Sade? Oh. I mean, I gotta, I, I, damn. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go with Sade, man. I gotta go with Sade. My man. It was like Mary's career is kind of like MJ's to me. Like I wish she hadn't come back and played for the Wizards. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, just let it rock. That's why I love that about Sade. Um, <laughs> Michael Prince. Prince. Uh, now, Ch grew up, mother. Same. Chappelle or Kevin Hart? Dave, man. All day. John Singleton or Spike? Damn. Yeah, I man. Ate the other day about how many movies and which movies Spike Lee directed. I didn't have, what, 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 what was it? I think it was, um, what, there was two big ones that I thought he directed and somebody blew my mind. Like, no, he didn't. But I got to go with Spike, man. Spike, all right. Miles or Coltrane? Miles. Miles. Gritty. Badu, Badu or Scott? Jill Scott or Erica Badu? Oh, you get me the verses, man. Yo, I got to go. I got to. Ah, damn, this is also crazy. Yo, their verses was wild. But yeah, it was. was. I loved it. And Jill was hammered. I got to go with Erica, though. She's crazy as hell. She's a beast. She's a hat wearer. I, I got to go with Erica. Yeah, yeah, she does. She does rock the crown. She does rock those hats. So my final question for you. You know, and this is something that I think, you know, sometimes it, it stumps people and it'll spend, you know, spend some time thinking about it is if you could spend 24 hours with, you know, a creative dead or alive, 24 hours, who would it be and why? I mean, just straight, you chop it up, eat, ask any question, just really, really chill with that person. I mean, any, any dead or alive, it would, uh, man. I would, I would, I would have to. Oh, shit, damn. <laughs> Between two real like uh, legends that are no longer with us, but to add some like some creativity to it, um, it would be uh, it would be Prince. 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 There you go. There you go, my man, Prince. Who who's who's the close second for you? The close second uh, was Mr. Malcolm X. Oh, bro. Oh. Just Bro. because, I mean, like, business mind was crazy. Like, crazy. Bro, crazy. we can have so many conversations, man. The, I, like, yeah, man, just like the ideas. Just, if he had to just let, my goodness, it, just being able to put people in motion. Yeah, so progressive. Hey, that side profile with the hat, and he did this move with the hand. <laughs> that was a wrap for the whole movie for me, man. I was like, what? Done. Peace. Done. Peace. I hope you enjoyed today's amazing interview. Today's episode was brought to you by my new book, Why Style Matters, The Mindset of Dressing Well and How It Impacts Your Life. To get your autographed copy, click the link in the description.